Congressman Mack. Thank you very much. The European Union is begging the United States for help. It's going hat in hand to the U.S. led International Monetary Fund, begging for money to bail out failing Eurozone countries such as Italy, Spain, and Greece. The IMF provides funding. The American taxpayer will pay the price, since almost one third of the IMF's budget comes from the U.S. Our next guest, who knows what he's talking about, says paying into a European bailout contributes to the destruction of democracy and freedom. And he says Europe must be allowed to fail. We welcome Nigel Farage, the outspoken member of the European Parliament of Freedom Watch. Mr. Farage, it's a pleasure. Welcome here. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to you. So let me get this straight. Uh, Greece, Italy, Portugal, Ireland, Spain are bankrupt or on the verge of bankruptcy. They want to look to the International Monetary Fund, one third of whose coffers are filled by the United States government. The United States government is nearly $16 trillion itself in debt. What yeah. kind of sense does that make? Well, I'm pleased we're having this debate because I've been amazed over the last few weeks uh, there's been a wall of silence from America. No one's been saying anything. I mean, with respect, um, I would say that your president is handling your own public finances pretty badly. How on earth can you want to get involved with tens and tens and tens of billions of dollars more, helping not, not to bail out Greece and Portugal and Ireland, but to keep them imprisoned inside a currency that they should never have joined in the first place? All you guys are doing and all we guys are doing is we're pouring good money after bad. It's going bust. Of that, there's no doubt at all. I wish you could make that statement to the Congress of the United States, to the, uh, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, and to the President himself. Nigel, what will happen if some miracle occurs and the U.S. says no, and Angela Merkel says no, and David Cameron says no, and Nicolas Sarkozy says no, and these countries are permitted to collapse? Well, I can't see the IMF saying no, because whilst it's based in Washington, uh, you guys have turned a blind eye to the fact that, that the last guy, Dominic Strauss-Kahn, was a French bureaucrat who supported the euro. We've now got Christine Lagarde in charge, another French bureaucrat who supports the euro. So the IMF in Washington has been hijacked. Angela Merkel's in a difficult position. Her own electorate increasingly are saying, look, we've spent 20 years paying for Eastern Germany to be reincorporated into the West after the Berlin Wall came down, but we're not signing a blank check for Greece. Uh, and Cameron, well, frankly, uh, he's got no backbone and, or, uh, frankly, no spine at all. So we're inching towards the next bailout. But there is a danger that at some point in time, the markets will just overwhelm this thing. And it won't matter whether the bailout fund is one trillion or two trillion or three trillion. Um, events will just become too big for it. What, what will happen, in your view, if there is no bailout and if uh, contract law and the law of supply and demand and the free market runs its natural course? I mean, aren't we destined for the failure of these socialist entities anyway? Wouldn't it be better to get it over with now? Well, I couldn't agree more. Let's take the pain. I mean, look, back in 2008, when these big banking crises hit, and, and, and much of it because of the stupidity um, of what American and European politicians did with the banks. But think about Iceland. Iceland just simply could not muster the reserves or the political will to bail out the banks. They let the banks go bankrupt. The Icelandic currency fell by 80%. Interest rates went to 20%. You know, it wasn't just the volcanic ash that year that made things look grim in Iceland. But where's Iceland today? Well, Iceland today is getting back to growth. She's taken the hit, she's taken the bad news, and she's recovering. Take Greece. We're keeping Greece trapped inside a currency. Her currency probably should be 65 to 70 percent lower than it is. Wow. Uh, you know, most of her banks need, need to go bust. And the risk is this, that we can talk about economics until the cows come home. But the reality is, if you strip a country of its democracy, if you take away from it the ability of your own elected government to do things, be they good or bad things, and you turn it over to three foreign bureaucrats, one from the IMF, one from the European Commission, one from the European Central Bank. Once a fortnight, they land in Athens airport right. and they tell the Prime Minister what he can and can't do. I put it to you that if you rob people of their ability to determine their own futures, they will turn to violence, and I believe 
that what will happen in Greece before too long is there will be a revolution. Wow. That is just how serious and how stupid this whole thing is. Not a pretty picture, but we do appreciate you painting it. Nigel, thanks very thanks. much for joining us. Thank you. The US